our first speaker has over 30 years as a top realtor. Randy Dick is a powerhouse in North American real estate. For 23 years, he led one of Canada's top teams, averaging over 250 transactions annually in 2019. Randy shifted to guiding agents and building their legacies and discovering their return on life. He is also a podcast host, author, keynote speaker and coach empowering top realtors, team leads and broker owners to scale and leave a lasting legacy in the industry. Randy, make your way up here. Boom! Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Where's the clicker? Here's the clicker. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. How's everybody doing? Van Cooper. I don't know who brought this weather, but thank you, whoever put it in their suitcase and brought it to Vancouver, because it is spectacular out there. And if you're a guest, come back again, but not in November. Let me just give you a little pro tip on that. Not November. Hey, well, I'm excited to share today what we've got going on here. And the clicker, let's try it here. Here we go. I've got a lesson for you. Who wants to save 10 million bucks? Not a million, 10. This is my 10 million lesson, $10 million lesson that I learned. And this is for everyone in the room. Who's new? This is for you. Who's a seasoned veteran that's like, oh, man, this is a grind. This is for you. How about a top producer lead? This is for you. And if you're here to learn how to attract more agents for this great company of what? What? EXP. Come on, come on, let's get going here. EXP. This is for you as well. This is for you as well. So this is me. Not really, I don't like cats much, but this is me at thousands and thousands of kitchen tables. Who's been at thousands and thousands of kitchen tables? And you are there pounding it out, doing your thing. What I want to share with you is that I was at a lot of these tables that I should have never been at. Like literally never been at. Now let me give you some context. I've been in this game for 30 years as you've heard. My team and I have sold over 7,000 homes. 7,000 homes. And I'm going to tell you right now that I went on thousands of appointments I should have never ever gone on. Think of all the time, energy, and money that I would have saved by not going on these appointments. And that is the message I want to share with you today, is how to pick and choose when and where you go and what you do. And when you do, you'll learn to earn more with less time. So this is where it all began. 1992, the managing broker said, you got to watch this video. This was a top trainer of the time, and he said, you got to do this. Chase convince, close. Chase, convince, close. Chase, convince, close. Who's done that? Maybe you, maybe you call it the ABCs, always be closing. But this was the concept, and it was like this. I was thinking to myself, I'm just going to go to the batting plate, going to grab that stick, that bat, and I'm just going to keep swinging and swinging and swinging till I make contact without knowing what the pitcher was pitching at me. So when I think of that, I think of this man here, Julio. Who's a Seattle Mariner fan here? Not a Blue Jay, a Mariner fan. Okay, we got one in the room. Julio, pretty good batter, pretty good player. At least last year he did well. These are his stats, 273 batting average, pretty good in the major leagues. But this is the one stat I want you to see. 32 home runs and his conversion rate of 6.38%. 6.38. Who does online leads here? Is 6% good? Is that a good conversion rate? That's a fantastic conversion rate. So Julio is a pretty good hitter. In fact, he was so good, he got invited to the Home Run Derby in his hometown of Seattle last year. And amazing, he broke a record. He had 41 homers at his first at bat and only 59 swings, which the conversion rate is almost 70%. 
incredible. 70% versus 6.3 in the regular season. What's the difference? What's the difference? It's the pitcher. See, when Julio was in the regular season, he's looking at the pitcher. He has no idea what's coming next. Is it a ball? Is it a strike? Is it a slider, a curveball, a fastball? Everything is a guess to him at the plate. It's a mind game and an athletic game at that point. That is the difference. But really what it comes down to is trust. Now ask yourself, when you're sitting at the kitchen table, what is the buyer and seller pitching to you? Is it a curveball? Is it a slider? Do you know? Do you understand behaviors of individuals and how they're going to react? That is the question. And so the big difference really is about trust. And so Franny, his friend, was the pitcher at the Home Run Derby. He's not even a pitcher. He's a catcher, first baseman, and third baseman. But the difference was this. It was trust. So think about trust. Julio knew that Franny was going to pitch him a ball at 85 miles an hour, plus minus a little bit. But it was always going to be the same speed. See, during the game, in a regular season, he has no idea what's coming at him. But at the home run derby, he knew exactly what that pitch was going to be. It was a useful pitch, or it was a reliable pitch, I should say. It was always going to be right on the outside edge of that plate, right in his power zone, so he could just, like, really turn on the ball. And then it was useful. It was going to be a strike. There was no balls. There was no guessing that it wasn't going to be in the strike zone. It was always going to be a useful hit. And then strategically, they knew each other and how they're going to go through the home run derby. And strategically, there's some things about the home run derby that you do to get extended time and so forth. So they were strategic about what they were doing. And then last but not least, man, he was swinging for the fences. Let's rip the ball off this frickin' cover. Let's go! And so he just swung for the fences, not just trying to make contact, but actually hit it out of the park. The question is, come back to it. Do you know what your buyer and seller, which is really the pitcher, is throwing at you? Do you know? Do you understand behaviors of individuals that make decisions in high, high, expensive decision making? And that's really the question. That's really part of my $10 million lesson that I went on thousands and thousands of appointments that I was guessing what I was getting pitched. And I was using the same thing that I'd always done over and over again. Chase, convince, close. Chase, convince, close. And I don't know about you, but when it gets tougher out there, do you grab that bat a little bit tighter? Like, and you're like, your swing's not as smooth because you're just like fighting it. Who's fighting it right now besides me? I mean, it's tough out there, right? That market we had was like we were crack dealers and there's crackheads everywhere. And they had, they had an ATM machine that just kept spitting out money called Trudeau. We ain't into that market anymore, guys. We ain't there. So we got to get serious about how we do this game. So I challenge you to be the chosen versus the chump. And I was chump in so many appointments. Imagine 7,000 sales. How many times did I go and I was the chump? Do you know what a chump is? A chump is somebody that is taken advantage of, tricked, fooled, and played. I was getting played by the pitcher, by the buyers and sellers often, and I wasn't making a decision not to go on those appointments. What I want you to do is have an understanding so you don't go on appointments that you should not go on. In fact, in the first 30 to 60 minutes of meeting somebody, you should be making a decision. Is this the right person? Am I going to be the chosen or the chump? And what happens when you go to the chump appointments? They abuse you. They take advantage of you. They want your commission. Enough of that stuff. Enough of that stuff. So the chosen is really about skill, expertise, being trusted, getting paid your full what? Fee, your full commission, without being negotiated against. So it's really about building a lot of trust. And we already know that, but until you actually be intentional about it, you will still go on those chump appointments. And what happens is you go and go and go, and then you get so deep into it, you go, 
gosh, I just got to close these guys. It's been two years. It's been two years. And man, if I have to give up half my commission, I'm doing it at this point. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So trust versus value. And this is where I went wrong so many times. I was working my value proposition versus my trust proposition. I was reversing them. And if you bring, build trust, the value will fit in later. But we kept going value, value, value. At least I did. And value is that once you've started justifying what you do and telling them how you're going to do it better than the next agent, you've lost them. So we keep screaming our value. It starts with my and I do. Who's done this? My experience, my awards, my pricing strategy, my influence, my discount fee structure. Stop it! So you can't co overcome with facts, logic, and reasoning. It is not what we do to overcome the obstacles from the pitcher that's pitching you a curveball, a slider, or whatever. It's really about connecting with them and understanding their biases through human behaviors. And that's when the light bulb came on for me. So this is probably the most important piece of this presentation is understanding the human behaviors. And really, really important. If this is resonating with you, is it resonating with you? Yes. <laughs> Oh, man, they are alive. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I am going to be running a course in fall on this. I think this is so important. I want you to be the chosen and not the chump because when you're the chosen, you only work with the right people and you have time for the most important people in your life, which is, which is who? Your loved ones, your hobbies. And this business, I want this to be really, really clear. We ruin the most important relationships in our lives because of real estate. We don't understand that nuance between what is important, my loved one or the deal. And so if I can help you go on less chump appointments and more chosen appointments, then I've won the day today for you. That's what I'm trying to do. So here's the seven. And I didn't make these up. This is out of a book, so I didn't make these up. But they are true. The best predictor of the future behavior is the past. There's no such thing as a fully open mind. I tell my wife all the time I'm open-minded. She says, BS, Randy. <laughs> BS. I said, no, no, no. Listen, I'm, I, I'm, I'm researching. I'm finding out this and that. And she goes, yeah, you do that. But then you just come back to the lane that you're in. <laughs> so there's no such thing as an open mind. Humans are hardwired to be negative. We love to go to the outer edges of the negativity. I know we're all positive, up, optimistic people here, but most of society loves to go to the negative edge of the earth. And so that is very, very common. Fear of loss is a powerful motivator. FOMO, oh my goodness. Who has done something out of fear of loss? We will die to do that, yes. And this one, I love compromise. This is out of Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference. First impression is really, really important, but lasting impression is more important. When we split the difference on a deal, and who's done that besides me over thousands of times, what we're doing is we're not working at getting the next piece of business, the next referral, because we're giving them only two options to respond to that. Yeah, I had to split the difference, but I got the deal. Or, why did I have to split the difference? So it's not a positive experience in most cases. And so opportunity for referral and repeat business is going to be slim to none with that response. This one, people will die over their autonomy. Listen, we've got a few homeless camps in this town. If I went to that camp and I said, I'm the authority and I'm going to tell you there's a better camp down the street with better facilities, they're going to tell me to do what? Beep off because it wasn't their idea. We have to remember that we have to let people make the decision. I have to let the pitcher make the decision, but if I have a level of trust, they're gonna tell me what the pitch is. You get that? See, if I'm telling the pitcher, I wanna strike, I, I wanna strike and I want a fastball at 100 miles an hour. No, nah, I don't pitch 100 mile an hour fastballs, but I'll send you a slider, right? So we need to understand that. And last but not least, vision drives 
decision. Vision drives decision. So let's just roll through one of these, just to understand. Humans are hardwired to be negative. They want to go to the edge of the earth. Who needs a price reduction in this room right now? Right now, besides me. Come on, I need some more hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how I would play out that price reduction today. Folks, I have some bad, bad news. In fact, the news is really, really horrible. You might even want to cancel the listing. You might want to terminate the listing. You might want to fire me. It is bad, bad, bad. Now, I sent them to the edge of the earth. They're thinking, what could be so bad? And I then shut up, and I wait for them to ask me, Randy, what is so bad? Well, what's so bad is that we're just not priced for the market. So they went way out there, and now they come back, and it's not so bad. Because it's just a price reduction. We're just having a conversation. I didn't kill her cat. I didn't let the cat out. Got lost. Nope. It's just talking about price adjustment. And I might say, listen, I'm really, really sorry, but I think I failed you because I did not help you price your home accurately when we started this. In fact, I think we're 3 to 4% overpriced. Here's a couple of comparables. But it's really your decision, autonomy. It's really your decision to make. But because you said you want to sell in the next 30 days, the only way I think we can accomplish that in fear of loss is that we need to be priced differently. But it's really your decision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you to think about it for the next you know, day or so. Get back to me when you're comfortable. But this is the price I would suggest. So I've already framed where I want it to be. But I'm going to let them make their decision. And the fear of loss, if they don't go to that price, they're not going to sell in the next 30 days. How's that for a price adjustment conversation? It is all about behavior. It is not my facts, my logic, my reason. It's about human behavior. Momentum selling. Who's you, who uses momentum selling here? I get four yeses, I'm in the door. Stop it. Momentum selling is not what people want. As soon as you ask somebody to say yes, they start opening up. They don't want to be open. They want to protect themselves. They want to feel safe. And safe means saying no. Safe means saying no. So here's some no-oriented questions to get the yes that I want. Would you be opposed to us doing a Zoom call before I come over? I want to do that before I go and meet them because I'm going to have a better idea if I'm going to be the chosen or the chump. But if I ask them, let's do a Zoom call, they're going to say, no, we want you to come over. So no oriented questions. Would it be unreasonable for you to stage your own property rather than staging your property? Would it be impossible for you to pay me my full commission structure? No versus yes. Would it be crazy to think that you're interviewing other agents? Would it be crazy to think that you're interviewing other agents? And would it be out of line? So these are great questions. So really what we want to do is we want to, what do we want to do? We want to see them. We want to hear them. We want to understand them. And when they feel that, when they feel that I've heard them, seen them, and understand them, they're going to say, hey, Randy, I trust you. I choose you. I need you and I choose you. Does that make sense? Neb's, Neb's nodding his head. I know that. As I close out, this is the key words I want to hear when I'm speaking to somebody about the chosen or the chump. I want them to say, that's right. See, we go on appointments and we keep pushing for answers. And they keep saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm, right. But when I connect at such a deep level and they say, gosh, this guy gets me, he hears me, he understands me, he goes, they say, that's right, Randy. That's right. So these are the keywords I want to hear when I'm on an appointment. That's right, Randy. That's right. So get to the point where you get that's right and you are in. And so this is the magic that happens. The chosen is about trust. It's about pro proactive listening. 
empathy, not sympathy, but empathy, hearing their pain points and then helping them understand how you can help them, not tell them, but help them and frame where they can go to solve their empathy. And then again, we're going to need to be the resilience shield. Adversity is coming at them hard throughout the listing process. So we need to be there to deflect that adversity and we're the resilience shield. And when that happens, we stop yelling at them because we're listeners and we tune into their frequency and we hear exactly what is driving them and then shaping their mind. So we have to actually reshape where they're going without telling them where they're going. It's quite a concept. And when that happens, this is what happens. Magic happens between them and I, and I'm now knowing what the pitch is going to be. I know exactly, because they just told me, Randy, it's going to be 98 miles an hour. It's going to be a fastball. It's going to be on the outside of the plate. Are you ready? Let's hit it out of the park. That's what's going to happen. And so that's my $10 million lesson. I went on so many appointments, and if I add up all those appointments that I shouldn't have gone on when I was a chump, it adds up to about 10 million bucks. And what I don't want you to do is have those experiences, but more importantly, I want you to have a better experience of life, return on life, rather than return on investment. And I want you to be in less appointments, getting paid more money with the people that really want you and trust you. My $10 million question. So if you like this, and you'd like to learn more and dive into a course, take a shot of that QR code. I'm gonna be doing this in fall. Really excited about this. This has been a game changer for me. And this works for that brand new agent, the agent in the trenches, the top producer or a team lead or an attraction agent. It is for each and every one of you. Thank you for being the chosen and being in this room. I appreciate you. Thank you.